number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla, that's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guest is the band Everclear, and also uh, Tony Hawk will be in here, world champion skateboarder extraordinaire for, I don't know, the last mm, 45, 50 years or at so. At least. They, uh, there's a big thing going on up at the uh, Universal City Walk. It is the uh, Vans uh, Hard Rock Cafe. Where the hell did I write that down? Uh, oh, yeah, it's it? a world championship of uh, skateboarding. Anyway, Everclear is going to play there. Uh, Tony's going to do something there, and uh, that's about all I know. You're burnt. Yeah. You all right? All right. Yeah, Drew and I did the Keenan show again tonight. Practically regulars on that show. I guess we're going to be regulars. Are we? They said he, That's what he said. Keenan said he wanted us back. And yeah. We'll see. Yeah, Drew, you're good this time. Really? Yeah, I thought you were well, fine. Thank you. I wasn't you, good last time? No, you're all right last time. I usually have to carry you, but uh, oh. tonight, <laughs> tonight you're right on top of your game. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, I opened up with a nice um, Rosh Hashanah joke. Which, uh, ooh. Just uh, apparently, pissed off the crowd. Apparently you pissed off the green room reacted. Really? Yeah. <laughs> your manager was in there. <laughs> Manager's Jewish. What's he care? Fine. I went out there and I said uh, to the Keenan crowd, uh, before we get started, I want to give my props out to the crowd. I want to uh, wish everyone a happy Rosh Hashanah. I know it's a predominantly Jewish crowd. And uh, didn't get a whole lot of laughs. No. No, not really. <laughs> oh, shut up, Mike. What do you say in here? You want to know where the joke was. Joke's in your ass. Big shot smoking a cigar out front of the studio when I got in. All right, so... So you're uh, tired because of that. Yeah, what else, Drew? Uh, I don't know. What else? No. Let's, All go, right. let's go to calls. No, I'm, I'm we'll looking forward to get ever clear in here. Those guys are good. Robert. Hey, how you doing today? Hey, you're 32. What's going on? Well, I have a problem with um, a female. She's married, and we've been seeing each other for a while. And um, she's talking about getting a divorce from her husband, and she wants me. The question is, should I go and take this? Take you know, go out with her before mm -hmm. she's divorced. Well, he's already look, going look, out with it. He's already banging it, right? Well, yeah, you can say that. And if I should go ahead and go in with her instead, does she have kids? In instead of what? Shush up. Does she have kids? Yes. Instead, How many? Instead of what? Four. Four. He just wants to know if he should get involved that way. She, she's thinking about divorcing her husband. I think well, you've left up part of the story. Is there another girl? Well, yeah. There's more than one girl. There's like. Two other ones, and they're all three married. I hate it all when right. Drew's right. Robert, you're you're having sex with all uh, three married women? No, only with one of the three. All right, we'll get, well, who get are the other two that are married? Is one of them your wife? No. What, what is the matter with you that you're getting involved in these situations? Well, who are the other two that are married? They're uh, friends I've known for a couple of years. Uh huh. And um, well, how are you dating? You, you, how you, they're married and you're not having sex with them? What is that? Oh, I I enjoy their um, company. And All right, so they're friends. Yeah, but they want me to have more than than just a casual uh -huh. relationship. Boy, uh, Robert, don't take this the wrong way, but they must be in a world of hurt. These women. Yes, I'm sizing Robert up, and uh, I don't pretty. know. I don't know. Uh, Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. I don't know where they're going, Robert. Well, love. I'm not. I'm not one of these guys, you know, I'm a, uh, what do you call it, I love to um, give them all the attention and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, probably more than what their husbands give All right, so you're having sex with one of them. Right. And the other two just want you. Right. And your dilemma is? Should I go? Oh, what, how the hell do we know? Robert, get away from all this stuff. Get somebody who's actually available. Oh, this is one of those. He's the, destroying the, families. The, the one, one woman has four kids. I mean, look. If you want to destroy your own life, if you want to screw another person's life up, those are the two of your choices independently. But when you start affecting the lives of five other people in a family, hell with that. Well, let me tell you what this call was, Drew. This I'm, I'm what, cool. I have three girlfriends. Right. This was that call yeah, we well, get. Well, guess uh, what? He didn't, he didn't impress me. <laughs> Settle down, would you? <laughs> Drew's all fired up these days. I think, I, I, I think I'm responsible for getting you fired up. Really? How'd you do it? I don't know. You know, when I start bitching about the TV show and stuff, and you get all fired up. I get all anxious then. Oh, okay. Now I'm just fired up. Now, let me tell you what this call is. This is the, um, here's my problem. I cannot ride a bicycle because my penis is so right, large. Uh, what do I do about this? Right, right. 
this is uh, one of those boastful problems. Except when you when you dig in, how large is it? Oh, 4.9 inches. Right. This is like during the 80s when I used to go to the Red Onion and say, you know, ladies, my problem is, is I have a whole trunk full of cocaine and I don't know where to put it. That's what you did, huh? Yeah, the whole 80s. I, I, now I'm the whole trunk genuinely, full of cocaine. truly impressed by your yeah. amazing social prowess. Now I use, now I use uh, meth Next. instead of cocaine as my, yeah, is my not, lure. The quantity is less than that. Helen. Hi. Yeah, you're 39. Yeah. What's going on, old timer? Oh, well, I kind of have a two-part question. And the third, um, the first part is going to be for Dr. Drew. All right. I am on 60 milligrams of Prozac a day mm. yep. and 2 milligrams of Xanax. Okay. I take um, a half milligram tablet four times a day. All right. And I was wondering, what can all this do to my sex drive? Shut it off. Shut it off. It can, it can I had a, another question. It can completely off. halt it. It doesn't necessarily have to do that, but it could, the, particularly the Prozac, and in those moderate doses, uh, it's, co it's probably the most common and disturbing side effect that people have from that drug. Yeah, I really haven't had, you know, I had um, drowsiness from the Xanax, et cetera, but I also have another question. You know, I have had sex since I've been on Prozac, and the guy was good at it. And um, so it was, it, you know, I didn't, ha you know, I, I enjoyed it. But anyway, I met a guy right before I went on summer vacation, and it was almost like I acquired a second shadow right away, and I was wondering if just his pushiness might have had something to do with a it. A second shadow? Yeah, it was like I acquired a shadow. I mean, he was, he, was, he was clinging to you. It seemed to be, yeah, and I listened to a lot of Marianne Williamson tapes when I was on the road, and it just seems like he's a needy... Okay. Who's Marianne Williamson? Pardon? What uh, folk trio was she in in the <laughs> mid-60s? <laughs> no, she's an um, author and lecturer. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, listen, Helen. Yeah. Listen to the tapes. Take, okay. Take the meds. Uh-huh. Everything's going to be great. Are All you right. sure? Because I'm positive. Yes, you have uh, the love line seal of approval on that one. Tatiana. Hi. Hi, you're 22. Hi, how are you guys? Oh, I couldn't get out of that one your fast reading enough. reading is improving. Yeah, I know. I love your show. Thank you. And um, actually, I have two questions, and one is concerning a phobia of mine that I've had ever since I was three, and today it's ruling my world. Um, it all started way back from a bad experience when I was three years old, um, but as I got older... What the was the experience? Oh, I'm, I've always been afraid of vomiting. Okay. And it started from a bad experience from when I was three years old. And as I got older and matured, I grew out of it because the memories, I guess, faded away. But recently I had something that my doctor described as mild sinusitis. Mm -hmm. And because of the dizziness and nausea it can uh -oh. cause, I almost, you uh -oh. know, threw up. Yeah. And all those old fears triggered, yeah. triggered back from when I was three years old. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm scared of it again. I do you know, it's fear, it. it's, uh, I, fear well, of that's weird. For fear me, that'd be like fear. Uh, is there such thing of uh, fear of breaking wind? Could you imagine? Uh, I have that fear when, when I'm in the room with you. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's me, though. Yes. Yeah, I, but fear I have no problem wind. with it. No. Imagine living under that or shadow. Fear, fear of belching or something. Uh, actually, fear of vomit is not that uncommon yeah, because I, it is such a negatively reinforcing experience. It's so unpleasant that your brain really learns that this is a bad thing and you have to avoid it. And so the premonitory symptoms, the things leading up to vomiting, like nausea, can be very anxiety-provoking. Yeah, uh, it's just one of those things. I can't leave my house because I'm afraid if I go somewhere. Like, if I go somewhere at all, it's, it's short, and I take, a, like, a barf bag thing. That is different. Now you got something I else going on. I won't even leave the house. Okay. That, it, 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 for some reason, has grown out of, or the, it started with this, uh, the vomiting issue, but it's grown into much more generalized anxiety and agoraphobia. And so I, something else going on. I've been to the doctor several times, and they keep saying there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I'm perfectly fine. But I, every time I eat something, I'm afraid I'm going to throw up. Yeah, but this is this is like this is a psychiatric thing. It's a psychiatric. Yeah. So, yeah. what kind of doctor should I see about the problem? Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Yeah, the, it may be an obsession. I've been thinking about a hypnosis to hypnotize. No, uh, no. Everybody wants hypnosis to yeah, fix every, them. You well, know? it's it's. I won't a, take a pill because that's bad, but a hypnosis can fix me. Yeah, it's very. No, they will take a pill. Yeah. They'll be hypnotized into taking the pill. Listen, there's no real quick fix to anything. Well, this could be an obsessive compulsive disorder that she has. And there's very, I mean, all kinds of funny little things can. can well, listen, this. here's the deal. She needs a more thorough evaluation. What, did you drink a whole bunch of coffee tonight? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You're really on top of it. 
I like the more uh, laissez-faire true. Then you give me crap for being that way. Yeah, I know, but I, I still, it's the true I'm you used to. Right. The one that doesn't know he's on the radio, yeah, the yeah. one that's uh, obsessed with his pager. Part the, of the problem, too, part of the problem is this makeup is giving me some sort of allergic reaction, and my eyes are on fire. Well, go wash so, it off. I've tried. It won't come off. Oh. All right. Sean. Hello. Hey, you're 20. What's going on? <sighs> um, well, I had a bad experience back in February. Um, I went out drinking with a couple of coworkers, and they said that all, you know, a bunch of people from work were supposed to be gone, and it turned out it was just these two guys. And I drank not much, you know, I drank very little. And the third drink that he brought me, I noticed he was sipping out of it and stirring it. At the time, I didn't think anything of it, but like soon after I drank that, he kept telling me, "Hurry up and drink it! Hurry up and drink it!" And I drank it. And I don't remember much after that, but I remember vaguely, you know, little bits and pieces of things. And that experience with those two guys has really affected me since then. And I want to know how can I... What, uh, what, what do you suspect happened? Well, I, I know because I woke up the next morning and with one of them and he had my underwear in his pocket. <laughs> in his pocket? Yeah. I was fully clothed, but he had my underwear in his pocket. Well, maybe he, no, even, even uh, Blackstone, uh, the great, could not do that. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of kind of the, you know, the tablecloth trick? No. Where you, you, you set a table and then you just whip the cloth Fiona, out from under it? Fiona Apple's boyfriend could have done that. Fiona Apple's boyfriend could have, uh, could have done that. But uh, this guy was no magician. He was, uh, he's a rapist, right? And the other guy, too. All right, I'm not sure, I'm not clear on what your question is. I just, I don't know what to do. Did you get a forensic exam? Yeah. You did. I was. I. I went to the doctor and everything. Yeah. Oh, what? Um, what was he doing with the underwear in the pocket? I don't know. I mean, how did you? Uh, how did you discover the underwear was in the pocket? I woke up, and I was just. I was wearing my jeans in bed, and I wanted to take them off, but then I realized I had nothing on under. Uh huh. <laughs> and, but and how I did you? Him, I yeah. Said, Do you have any idea where my underwear are? <laughs> and he said. They're right here. He whips them out. Um. So you went to the police? I didn't go to the police. So you didn't have a forensic examination? I, I guess not. <laughs> uh, but I did go to the doctor just to make sure I was all right. And what did, what did he say? Who? Okay. The doctor yeah. or the guy? Well, <laughs> uh, listen, let me, uh, Sean, I, I know you've been through a lot, and so I don't want to chastise you too much, but let me just put this rule out for Love Line. Okay. If we're talking about somebody, mm -hmm. let's just pick a historical figure. Abraham Drew? Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. That's what I was thinking. So I, I really was thinking. How weird is well, that? I was thinking Abe Lincoln because we're close. All right. So if we're talking about your family and your childhood, mm -hmm. and then you say, um, but I was obsessed with Abe Lincoln. Okay. And then I say, how come? How did he figure into your life? We're talking about Abe Lincoln now. With the last person you leave off with, and this is not just we, we will you, not Sean, use this a, is everybody. We will not use a pronoun. Every pronoun we use will refer back to somebody we've just discussed in the previous sentence. Uh, right. If we say who, it is the last person we spoke of. We say him, her, she, or them. his, them, the previous sentence we're referring to. Right. Okay. okay, so the doctor said you're okay. Well, he didn't really do anything. He was like a pap smear machine, you know? Yeah, well, it's not a forensic examination. Forensic exam, they go in and they collect evidence. And but it's best to have that done within 24 here's hours. Here's another... Oh, hold on one second, Sean. Here's another use for the crotch-sniffing dog. I don't know if you've heard me talk about this, but yeah. the, this forensic exam can be a very humiliating, degrading experience. The woman has already been traumatized. She then has to go in there while some guys, uh, you know, mop up, trying to find, you know, while Quincy jumps in there and tries to pull out little fiber samples and sperm right. samples right. and whatnot. Right, right. The, um, the crotch-sniffing dog that I've been talking about, same ones that work at the airport, but trained just a little differently, could just give a sniff and then sniff the man's crotch, and if he started barking or going in circles or something, uh, you know it was it. a bust. <laughs> you keep your pants on, and he keeps the uh, panties in his pocket. All right, All right so, so w what about the... You, you should have gone to the police, should have done oh. a forensic exam, but you didn't. Yeah, this, the point of this discussion is to, for people that, are, that do have something unpleasant like this happen to them, Go immediately to an emergency room. Make the report right away. Because if you don't do it right away, the chances of being able to do anything ever, if you should want to, are slim to none. But something happened to you before this, didn't it, Sean? No. Really? Nothing. No, never? No. Wow. <laughs> it just, I mean, uh, just sounds like something did. Nothing did. Yeah. But 
the way that this experience has affected me. Uh, do you still work with these guys? No, I transferred to another store, uh -huh. but they're still working. Can you tell? Can you tell a superior there? Pardon? Can you tell a superior? I at, did. All right. Well, I went to the. Every, yeah. I went to the top. And what happened? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> you might want to talk to an attorney about this. How How long ago was this? It was in February. I mean, I don't think I don't know that you can do anything from a le from a criminal standpoint, but uh, I would think that a lawyer would want to uh, do something. He he or she would have a liability. You would think the the institution that, that these guys are working for. Uh, well, uh, most uh, places of employment will have a sign up in the restroom right next to uh, "Please wash your hands," which is uh, "No drugging and raping uh, uh, coworkers." Uh, it doesn't say "No drugging and raping." It actually has a uh, picture, picture with, with a slash over it over a roofie, and then a guy mounting a coworker uh, mm -hmm. with the little the the little things, the zingers coming from her head, meaning she's uh, passed out the X's for eyes. I, I think that's how it goes. <laughs> I, Drew, I, you know, you laugh at the inventions, but I think you came up with a good one today. Well, that one didn't go out on the air either. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Start talking about the uh, what were we talking about? Oral sex. Oral sex. All right. Oh. Immediately, like hold. <laughs> you know, by the way, you know it's a bad. Uh, you, you know you've gone wrong. You know you've made a, a sharp right turn when you're filming a TV show. You're actually on stage talking to a guest, uh, talking to the host in the middle of a TV show, and a long, gray-haired gent with a headphone, a headphones on and a clipboard just walks straight out to the middle of the set. There was no cut. Yeah. There was no, uh, you know, usually you yes, get... hold. Yeah, usually get that up in the booth. Uh, hold on, we're going to take that again. Nope, he just walked straight out on the stage and stood right in front of me, and I was actually still going. I know. Uh, we did the Keenan show tonight, and one of the questions they asked us from the audience... Uh, we'll not be seeing this one on the air, by the way. No, but no. we'll tell you what happened. Um, one of the questions was, uh, do you, is, it, is it bad to swallow? I think that's what the question was. Yeah. Was it not true? Yeah, and then we went on at some, uh, in some detail about uh, the possibilities, the uh, implications of swallowing, and Drew talked about all the medical implications, and I came up with a good idea because... Drew, it is not good for anything to pass the esophagus, right? Yeah, it shouldn't get the mouth. The mouth is protected against some of these things. But uh, past the mouth, you're in trouble, or bleeding gums, you're in trouble. Right. Okay. Now, speaking of bleeding gums, from a guy who was at the dentist uh, just the day before yesterday and many days before that, I know at the dentist you can keep your mouth hung open for a good hour and a half without ever swallowing because they put the suction device down that there. That hook that it they goes They put that hook, it just hangs down in your mouth, and it just sucks out any excess anything that's in there. And you rinse once in a while, too. So I came up with the idea on the Keenan show that uh, we ought to just roll that apparatus into every bedroom, and then that thing could just... <laughs> and you could just be going to town uh, orally with that... <laughs> and then, you know, when it really made that... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was time to head to the fridge. But uh, the uh, segment producer, the floor manager, someone walked out uh, just at the time that the uh, hijinks really, really kicked into gear. All right. Uh, Jennifer. Hello. Hey, you're 26. Yeah, I was calling. Um, I've been married for about four years now, almost four years. And uh, my husband and I have been trying to have a baby for two. Mm -hmm. And... We haven't been able to, uh, in the last about six months or so, we've both been fertility tested and all that fun stuff. Okay. And there's no physical problems. And I've been kind of wondering, and I don't really, we don't have the money for, you know, fertility implants, and it's not all that urgent right now. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering, I was pregnant when I was 17, mm -hmm. and I gave my child up for adoption, mm -hmm. and... I was wondering if that could, like, psychologically somewhere have some kind of effect on me physically to where I, know, I don't have any idea. But it, it, it is really amazing how much the psychological state of the individual can affect their medical, physiologic functioning. Right, but I yeah. really don't think that it's likely it's to, a good angle. to persistently it's more, create infertility. It's more likely that God is punishing you, though, isn't it true? <laughs> Would that be a more viable answer? It's almost as likely. So uh, that, that is not it, Jennifer. I would say not. 
that'd be my I, mean, I can never say categorically no it's an interesting idea and I, again I'm always amazed at how much the psychology affects the medical function but okay. that would be a far a way out well that's what I kind of thought but everyone's like well eh, no. no I mean look I, I'd be more concerned with there are all kinds of nuances uh, you, you got pregnant with a different guy before right yeah there are all kinds it's of like I've, I've only actually slept with two people yeah right? but I understand but, so. <laughs> but there are all kinds of different uh, sort of uh, steps in the fertilization process that can go wrong between two people right. and the, your body's reaction to his sperm the immunity immunologic reactivity to the fetus the, uh, the combined effects of the does two the first guy look anything together. like the, the current guy no they're complete opposite okay well, they're going to forget point. that angle. But but I'd say keep keep striving. And most pregnancies end in the first trimester. Well, you may actually been able to conceive. As you know from listening know. to the show, the best way to ensure conception is for the husband to uh, lose a job. Lose a job, and um, uh, usually a couple of teeth seems to work too. And maybe get strung out. Yeah, a little on bit a old. Methadone or something. Maybe each of them could have an affair or something. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Someone loses a job, little affair, and uh, uh, maybe um, and have five kids. A little meth habit or yeah. something. <laughs> All right, uh, Tony Hawk will be in here, Everclear will be in here, everyone will be in here after this. Hi, this is John Favreau, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Is that yeah. something? Yeah. Drew has a fit when he hears John Favreau's name. That is so I think bizarre. he's a very friendly guy. That is so weird. Art Alexakis, Craig Montoya. Greg Eklund, all from Everclear, are in the studio. It is uh, it has been some time, but this is uh, one of Loveline's favorite bands, we're and uh, we're glad to have you back. Um, don't we Adam? win an award? Or yes. Something? Who's John Favreau? John Favreau did Swingers, uh, wrote the movie Swingers, and co-starred or directed, co-starred mm -hmm. in uh, Swingers, and we mm -hmm. had him on the TV show and. Drew had a little bit of a nervous breakdown and lashed out at him Did while the cameras him? were rolling. Can we, no. can we share about it? We actually hugged. Can we, you know, really? Did you? But, but I, I uh, imploded. Really? About what? What did he do? Uh, it's what did he it, say? It, I can listen. He genuinely is a nice guy. He's obviously a very talented guy. But there's something about I, I've never had this reaction to somebody. He just I react funny to him. We just. Hi, just, this is John Favreau. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And he started getting very bombastic and sort of uh, opinionated about this a, a very sick person we were talking to. They probably shouldn't have put the call through even. The guy was sick, and I was saying, hey, look, you got to take these medicines. And I'm like, hey, no, you don't. And he was basically advocating this guy do something that could have hurt him, and it just infuriated me. Yeah, I well, wouldn't have I wouldn't have typified him as bombastic. <laughs> I mean, that, but... that was what I experienced it anyway. So Yeah. Go. See? Drew, you had a bombastic soul that night. And, it was and a he, sick show on the road or something, man, wasn't it? I would like to see yeah. that I actually. dig that about him. <laughs> yeah. I like it yeah. when he's like that. Tonight, man, I'm driving out. I'm going, get him, Drew. <laughs> get him. And you're going, I like the laissez fair Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you do, because he's still on your thunder, big guy. <laughs> you know it. Well, he steals the thunder that comes out of my ass, actually, but that's about it. Can uh, you say ass on the radio? I think you can on this Whoa. show. <laughs> all right. The, uh, all right. Drew, uh, shut it. Uh, engineer Mike, shut Drew's mic. Uh, microphone off for just a second so i can speak to the band uh, first off all right go get hey drew uh, give me some coffee too seriously thank you no, you guys need fine. anything no, oh this is a new role for you drew yeah. uh, perhaps you'll get a raise uh, now the long deserved raise hey handsome cd you got there yes it is so much for the afterglow right after a sparkle and fade they sort of uh sound uh, are, you, are you saying it was implied well, I'm just saying that it it's almost makes sense that it's the one he, after it. He there you go. Know what, he, what he's saying. Does that make sense? Of course. And it, it'll be out on Tuesday. Tuesday. And it's already getting a bunch of airplay. Mm -hmm. A lot of airplay. Now, do they release? They do they just release the single, single. or do they release the mm -hmm. whole CD and single. people pick them? No single. So the record guys. Are you pick serious? The you don't know. It's how like a lottery. It works. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> no. Here's what I don't know. We don't play <laughs> records on this show, and I don't know what the hell's uh, going on. But I go you work for K Rock. I mean, <laughs> I, you, yeah, ever but, know, you ever notice that they played the same song over and over <laughs> and over again? Yes. <laughs> Those are singles. Yes. That's what they call a single. That's, and that's taken from a record of a lot of other songs. All right. Listen, uh, the most condescending group in the world. <laughs> You're going home We're to that that big craftsman style house of yours. In, <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's because they keep playing it over and over again. You, smart guy. But listen, <laughs> but you, you know no, what? Here, here's what I didn't know. I didn't know if they gave them the whole CD and let them just no. pick what they wanted or just gave them the single and said, this is what we're releasing first. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If you were going to go to a bunch of people who... Yes! <laughs> in charge of that video. 
<laughs> little uh, fool for the city. Yeah. Uh, fool for the city. Talking. 35th time in a row. Ah, coffee boy Drew's back. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, Drew, run back and get some creamer. In there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're talking to a man who's done more school than all of us put together. <laughs> together. Yeah, no, no, uh, no tall order there, though. <laughs> no. A guy with a GED probably has more collective education <laughs> hey, than the four of us. I dropped out of several colleges. Thank you very much. Yep. The so, both of us did. Oh, uh, Fine, finer institutes of learning. Well, you guys are one of the uh, one of the more in intellectual, or at least yeah. well spoken. <laughs> well, please, uh, right. who's your competition? Uh, Degeneration and uh, groups like Bush. that. Uh, uh, black grape. All right, true. Who's the one that got the anthropologist on? Uh, what group? Oh, for Christ! Not anthropologist. Bad, bad religion. Yeah. You guys, it was Bad religion. Bad yeah. religion. Yeah, yeah they're, they're smart. They're smart, smart bunch of guys, mm -hmm. and a nice bunch of guys. All they right, are. what do you want to do? Do we want to hear something? And uh, do we want to hear something from the CD now? And uh, by the way, Tony Hawk, skateboarder extraordinaire, will be in here later on this evening to talk about the uh, event that Everclear is playing up yeah. at. We'll get all into that. But we're going to hear something off the CD. What do we? Uh, what's the single here? Uh, everything to everyone. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Everything to everyone off of so much for the afterglow from after the uh, afterglow for uh, cool. from Everclear. Hey, I like that song. I mean, I've heard it before, <laughs> but now I like it more because you guys are in Thanks. front of me. It's a uh, <laughs> little, uh, little, little poppier than uh, little poppier. than usual, but little, I, I dig that. Zing, little zing, and that nee, 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 it reminds me of a song, but I can't think of the song that it reminds me of. That nee, 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 I'm not going to help you. Uh, yes, Engineer Mike, you got it. Uh, Fox on the Run. From uh, Sweet, <laughs> was that no? The Sweet do Fox on the Run, yeah, and yeah. Ballroom Blitz. Excuse oh. me, the Sweet. You oh, that's say that, sweet. You say that about every song there is, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. All right, so Mike yeah, is effing with me. Every hard rock song that he doesn't know because he's young and kind of stupid. Right. Me and Greg here. Yes. He says, "Oh, cool! I love Nazareth." Nazareth. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I have no idea what they sound like, but they they're uh, awesome. And he thinks Jake Ely did every guitar solo on on on, on, on Ozzy. Ozzy Osbourne's well, best record. How about the band that was named after their coach? Yeah, oh, Jim Leonard Skinner. Yeah, Drew. Uh, Drew and I almost got in a fist fight in a limousine in New York yes. because <laughs> in a limousine. <laughs> he was well, we're big wigs now, but he he was telling me that um, uh, w uh, what the hell's their biggest song? Not Sweet I Home never Alabama. Heard, I never heard any of them. Uh, that was what it was. Oh, Freebird. 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 Freebird came out in '79. <laughs> <laughs> he told me. I said, "Are you nuts? The band was dead by '75." No, they were dead in '78. All right, please, Art. Uh, hey, shut Art's mic off. You want to engineer Mike? I don't need this. Guy rolls in here late, full of attitude. Now he's gonna he's gonna crap on my free bird. Shut my mic off. Oh yes, he's, he's like a he's like a good lab. That engineer Mike. He's stupid, but he follows directions. All right, turn his mic back on, please. Uh, should God, we, should we, should we, we know send? what side of the bread yeah, is buttered. Take I'm call, big please. Mike. All right, let's get one in, Julia. Hey. Hey, you're 18. You're on with Everclear. Yes, I am. Um. I have trouble having orgasms. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean trouble? Uh, I've never had one before. Ah, well, that's more than that's, just trouble. That's true. How, how, you're 18, Julia? Yes. How long have you been having sex? Uh, since I was 16. Same guy or different guys? Uh, lots of different guys. Mm. Might have something to do with that. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. It's like going out to play a baseball game with a brand new Met every time. It just, it's, <laughs> that you is an amazing it, anal it's analogy good. that an 18-year-old girl... Is not gonna get. Well, let me let me I get it. Let me explain a little more. Uh, I put the ball in, in underneath the mattress. You put the belt around it or park it under the oil that sucker to your yeah, mom and kick you out of the house. Right. You could go out with a brand new mitt, and you could technically play, and you might even catch a few. But it's you're not going to be spectacular <laughs> at all. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to put in X amount of innings with that mitt. Really break it in. Really learn the nuances in <laughs> Man, order you're, to, you're, to you're, fully be satisfied is he, with is it. Is he a little out of control with this whole mitt thing? No, I think he's right. Yeah. I know, but, but you Aren't know where he's going with the minute ago. No, don't worry. No, I'm on board. I'm with you. Oh, okay. We're all I'm in the car here. with you. I'm just thinking you're you're kind of going, you're, you're, the analogies of the mitt are just... Yeah, like, I may be spinning out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Anyway, can I say something? Yeah. Intimacy, Julia. There you go. Intimacy. Intimacy. Okay, I have trouble being intimate yeah, with and, guys. Yes, well, we then, then you're just, then you're just, the you're exercising. Is, like, I try to masturbate, right? And I still don't even get off. Do you fantasize? Yeah. Have you? Do, do you get it? Do you get aroused? Do you get wet? Well, and all yeah. That good stuff? I mean, it feels kind of cool, but that's the extent <laughs> of it. It's very common for somebody your age not to have had orgasm. Yeah. It tends to come with maturity, and that people learn to get in touch with the affect and feelings that women need to have in order to have sexual climax. And just mastering the mechanics is a lot more difficult than with a guy. 
All right. So, and and I and and the art is exactly correct that if you really want to get turned on, you need an intimate relationship, a stable relationship. There's nothing like it. Not man. a new myth. All right. And this is uh, why True loves art in the Everclear so much, because uh, the word intimacy has not been uttered by Ban uh, in here since we had Kaja Gugu on in uh, 1984. And we'll be back. Hey, don't what? diss Lamal. No, no. All right. All right. Hey, this is Pat Boone. You and I are listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Oh, that, that's what I need yeah. to do. I need to uh. speak like Pat Boone. Pat can Pat can uh. Uh, read a whole encyclopedia uh. in between words. And <laughs> it's really a good way of thinking. You always come out like a genius because you just think everything out before you say it. And everything he read in that dictionary would prove the creationist theory. <laughs> <laughs> A little, uh, a little religious Pat Boone theorizing going on here on Loveline. Uh, when we had Pat on the show, I asked him in jest, have you ever kicked a guy's ass? And he said, yeah, yeah, I have. He said that uh, some guy was at uh, the uh, gate of his estate. He was talking into the intercom. He was making lewd comments about Debbie Boone uh, during the uh, you, light, <laughs> you Light Up My Life years. Uh, he somehow hopped the wall and like uh, sneaked in the service porch. No, he ended up in the front door, front front porch. Oh, he was. Well, yeah. anyway, Pat uh, opened the door and cold cocked the guy, and then later, <laughs> and later he picked said, him off the ground and put his arm around him and took him in for coffee. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I've heard that story before. Yeah. He, uh, you he, know, that he sounds like good ass. press to me. It was I don't the know. best cup of coffee I ever had, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had, uh, he had the guy arrested uh, after the coffee. Hey, yeah, do, uh, uh, we'll get back to the calls in a second. But uh, when does the tour begin? Well, how does that go? We start. We're we're playing this Sunday. You know, with Tony. Tony what time and, is that? Um, we're playing, I believe, around four forty-five. He might know for sure. That's what I was told. At the um, City Walk. At the City Walk. Um, it's going to be our first real big official Everclear show. In um, where are they going to put all those town? people? Oh, they've they've got a stage built and they've got this huge half pipe set. I mean, there are going to be a, a ton of people. people. Well, there was like Helmet played last year, and I believe there was like five thousand people there. It's going to be more. I five, just, I where do they have it at that at that by the opening hard rock. in front they're, of the? They're expecting they're close close to, the Hard Rock, right? In front yeah. of the theater and the Hard Rock yeah. there. They're expecting close to about ten thousand. I bet it'll be ten thousand. people. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. It's 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 going to be a lot of fun. And then from there, is there any uh, dates or any yeah. official launch? We're doing three weeks of free shows all over the country. It's an in-store promo tour that I came up with the crazy idea of. And Capitol's like, great, we get to pay for it. Great. <laughs> so you, you'll be traveling around uh, doing free shows, free signing shows are, CDs and all that stuff? Go, yeah, but we're playing full-on electric rock shows right. all over the country. And then, um, then we uh, start the tour on the day before Halloween in the Midwest, and we... End up here at the El Rey on November twenty fifth. Close it up. Twenty fifth. So, all right. So you come back yeah, then right. and, and give the plug for the uh, El Rey. Are you going to be going out with anybody, or yeah. do you know that much? Yeah. Our Lady Peace and Letters to Cleo. Oh, we just. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we just had that conversation with Our Lady Peace, who we had on. Right. I think it was last, yeah, last week. week. Yeah, yeah well, I heard I, they said very nice things. Very nice band, and um, actually, I, I just saw Our Lady Peace on uh, I don't know Conan last night or uh, the Didn't night you have before, them on something the TV like that. Show? No, 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 just no. Last week on the radio. And uh, actually, I like both those bands. So you guys should be in for a good tour. Rick, yep. you're 20. Yes, I am. What's going on? Hey, I'm going to try to say a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff fast because I got to do it. All right. First, Adam Crowa. Uh, you're badass. It's cool how you go on your little tangents, and, I, and I'm the future of radio. I'm, a, I'm on a college radio station right now called Camp around here, and uh, I, I, I go off on sorority girls, how they always say like, like every other word. Is that a, is that a junior college radio? No, it's a U of A, University Arizona. of Arizona. Oh, I thought that was University of Assholes. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that much. Rick, that, what that's, else? that's where I went. Really? Who went to Arizona? Our no, no, I went to University of Assholes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, the, uh, so I noticed you guys have a lot of those kind of people calling up that are always, like, seem like airheads because they just say, like, there was this, like, guy that, like, and I just, you know. All right, hold on. Let me, let me intervene here for a second, Rick. Right. This is not the uh, hallway of the dorm room. Do you understand? Yeah. This is big-time radio. Yeah. <laughs> we, big don't time. Have, we don't have time. Big-time radio, Rick. That's why we're all crammed into this small little room waiting for you to get to your question. 
All right. right. Then what I got to say is, Art and everybody for Everclear, you're awesome. And I was really ultimately hoping maybe I can get an autograph picture because you're badass. Last year we drove all the way up to Phoenix from Tucson only to run out of tickets, like two, two people before we got to see the show at the Electric Ballroom. So mm. we missed out last year. So you want them to send you an autograph picture? Yeah, hoping. Uh, the band doesn't take pictures. They believe it steals their soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, Do you guys but have you, a picture? You know what we did, though? We we had a friend of ours. He was actually on a, on this ashram in Oregon do woodcuts of us. And we're okay we'll with that. We'll send you those. Yeah. We'll sign those and send them right out to you. Uh, be a big uh, thing of naughty spruce coming uh, via <laughs> UPS. <laughs> All right, Rick. Is I'll, he fed these lines here? Has uh, he, like, fed uh, this stuff? I'll tell you what. Well, no, I used to be a carpenter, so I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, hip, yeah. I'm hip to the wood. So, Rick. Yeah. You know all about the wood. Huh? We'll, uh, we'll put you on hold. Yeah. I, I got it. I'm just not acknowledging it. What's your question, Rick? No, that's it for Rick. Rick, that was <laughs> his question. He had comments. We'll put you on hold, and if the band sees fit, they will sign something and, and like, send it out at some point. We'll, yeah. s we'll send you something. So, uh, Sherry, Ann. Sherry, Ann. Get the Like, we'll send it to you, like, talk to Riggs quick. Talk to the like, radio gun. Right away. All right. All right, all right like, Rick. Like, cool, see Rick. See you later. Cool. Like, see. Cindy. Yeah. You're 16. You're on with Everclear. Yeah. First, I want to say that I think... Hi, Everclear. I think you guys are great. Hi, Sydney. Hello. Thanks. You rule. Thanks. Um, my question is that, uh, well, a couple weeks ago, I was fooling around with a guy, and I was giving him a hand job, and I felt these uh, little bumps at the end of his penis. And I just kept going, and I didn't do anything else because I was too afraid what it, what it could be. And I was wondering, <laughs> you know. So you kept you going? Mean? Yeah. Right. But, Okay. It, you don't it, want to draw it any. Last, it didn't last long. It only lasted like 15 minutes, maybe. How old was he? Uh, 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I was just wondering what they might be, because I would like to go further with them, but w I don't Were they symmetrically distributed around the head? It was on the b base, the bottom. Were they symmetrical around the base? Um, no. It was just, just like a few of them. Just like around it. Did it uh, form uh, Orion's belt? How big? Were they? How big would <laughs> you say they are? Like the head of a pen? Um, it's, there was just a few of them, and they were just kind of dry. Like the head of a pin, that size. Kind of, yeah. Were they raised much, or just a tiny bit? Just a little bit. Probably that is the pearly penile papule, and those are normal. That Say that again. <laughs> yeah, please. I didn't get that. I'm sorry. No, I just pick uh, a pick a pearly penile papule. <laughs> that is probably the pearly penile papule, which are normal little growths around the base of the penis that, that many men many men have. Say. It, it's, of course, always a possibility that it is a wart, uh, and you ought to check it out. To General be sure. warts. You should be wearing a condom anyway if you're going to be engaging oh, in good contact. You're going to give a guy a hand job with a condom on? Well, no. not, not. She's, she, she wants to go, she further. To go oh, further. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. But I, I'm yeah, I would have given job. him a blowjob, but I stopped right there. I was like, Now, you're 16. Nah. Is, that, is that common practice for a 16-year-old? She's a little behind, actually. <laughs> she should be in the side of me. <laughs> hey, Cindy, <laughs> Cindy, can I ask you a question? This is Art. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. How long have you, and, you know, you don't have to answer if you want to, but... No one knows who you are, so it's okay. Um, how long have you been giving fellatio to boys, men? Well, I've only given two, and I mm. first time I did it, I was 14. God, what, see, what, what do you think about this? I mean, <laughs> Actually, I was kind of, uh, not harassed, uh, pressured. Yeah. The guy was daring me, so I was like, and I really, really Daring you. Him. I dare you. You really like <laughs> it. I bet you can't do it. <laughs> In one way, I was under the influence, and another way, I was, he just was like, oh, come on, you know, I dare you to, or whatever. And I was just like, all right, fine. But I didn't go further. That's a new technique for you, Adam. That's good, yeah. I, I didn't go I, far. Just gave him a hand job. That was it. And no, I know. I just, the reason I'm asking, you know, I'm, I got a daughter. I got a five-year-old. And, yeah. and, you know, when I was a 14-year-old boy, I, or 18-year-old boy, I would have been all about it, too. But, you know. Looking at it from my perception, from my perception as a father, mm -hmm. and just as a grown-up, it's just like the more time you take to find out about someone, and and to mature and to grow up, and then become sexually active when you're both able to handle it, both mentally and physically, mm -hmm. all that stuff is so much more fun. I mean, the girl that called earlier, it's just like intimacy. It's like learning about someone, and someone who really cares about you is going to stick around. Well, well you're, it's true that your body is physically able uh, or capable. Oh, and it's screaming at, for at 13 and a half or 14. It's screaming but for But it, it really uh, turns your mind into jello at that age. Thank God I didn't get laid in high school. <laughs> well, I, I might be pursuing a relationship with this person. I'm just kind of seeing him now. So we're just, we're kind of taking it slowly. And cool. All right. Together. Cool. That's fine. So, I mean, it's not like I'm just going to, I don't like one-nighters, so. Okay. Don't forget the condoms. I know. All right, Sydney. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a dad. <laughs>
<sighs> no dad has hair that color. I <laughs> you want to bet? You want to bet? You want to see baby pictures? Oh yeah, yeah. You've already well, seen them. Oh, no, but I'd like to see them again. And, and Drew, get out the wallet. I hear the kids are going to be five soon. Yes, it's mine. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. David, you're 16. Drew, sli- hold on. Hold on. Drew, don't yeah, panic. <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. Just slide the chair out. <laughs> Beautiful. David, what's going on? Well, um, I just want to say, first off, is Adam, you're so cool. You know, I like you a lot. And um, Thanks. <laughs> um, like, last weekend, I had a party at my house and stuff and got really drunk and with my friends and um, one of my best friends and stuff, we, we all, like, fell asleep and I just, um, I started, like, doing stuff to him. And I, I never consider myself, you know, gay or anything, but, like, I, I always have, like, an interest in it. <sighs> yeah. So I'm worried, like, you know, I, I kind of, you know, want to keep doing that, but, like, I'm, I'm wondering whether I should tell my friend that I did that. He wasn't aware that you were doing it? He was passed out. Yeah. There's still some, I mean, like, when I threw up in the ice maker in Tijuana and passed out in the alley, I was still aware when the cop came <laughs> down the alley and smacked me with his uh, billy club to get up and go back into the restaurant. The, there is some recollection. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm engrossed in uh, Art's daughter in a very healthy way right now. Very lovely young daughter. Oh, David, great. I'll tell you what. Talk, we're, this is an important question. We're going to regroup because uh, Art and Drew didn't hear a word you're no, saying. I, I heard exactly what he said. And Oh, okay. All right. We were busy with our kids. All right, so. well, listen, we got to go to break. I'm going to uh, kiss Art's butt during the break, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, deal with you. Okay, David? All right. All right. We'll be back. You're listening to Love Line in Washington and Baltimore on 99.1 HFS. It is, uh, it is Loveline. Art, Greg, and Craig are here from Everclear. And uh, the great Tony Hawk has just stepped Woo-hoo! into the studio. And they're all going to be up at the Hard Rock uh, Vans World Championship of Skateboarding. I know you guys are playing on Sunday at mm-hmm. uh, the Universal City Walk. Is it also going on on Saturday? Yeah, the, uh, the event is Saturday and Sunday. And practice is all day tomorrow. So I'm basically living there for the weekend. Okay, um, we will get all into it. We got to go to the 10 second station identification, and more Love Line will be forthcoming. Here's uh, Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. Phone number for Love Line 1 800 LFVE 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Everclear is here. Tony Hawk is here. We're talking about the Vans Hard Rock World Championship of Skateboarding. <coughs> Tony. We'll um, talk to you about skateboarding for just one second. I don't know anything about this skateboarding because, it, to me, this is a lifestyle. And to me, it's almost like homosexuality. Now, <laughs> not, that, mm-hmm. not that you have to be gay to skateboard, but you're either in or you're out. Like, I don't know what the hell goes on at a gay bar because I'm not gay. And I've never been into skateboarding, so I don't know what the hell goes on with the skateboarding other, other than uh, I know your name, and I know you've been one of the premier guys for uh, many, many years. And... And things are getting progressively uh, more dangerous as the <laughs> years wear on, as far as I can tell. Yeah, well, the ante keeps getting up every time you turn around. It is, it, is, it is this way with all sports, and I think it has to do partly with technology. Because I used to ride the old Black so, Knight with the clay But knowing uh, clay that, is wheels. that true with homosexuality, then, is what, yes. what you're saying? Is yes. The, the ante keeps getting up? Uh, Ear felching will be the uh, will be the next fad in in homosexuality. I'm calling home to tell my wife, tell my daughter to go to bed. I don't want her to hear this this, this ear felching. Oh, she doesn't know. And, and, what and we that found means. that Art and I are bonded uh, through our uh, fertility. Campaign. Oh yes, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I, well, I promise more. Why did you even with tell Tony? Him? But I'm glad. I'm glad we're uh, digressing for a second. Art has a beautiful five year old daughter. Drew has um, four kids, actually. He doesn't know about one of them, so I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want to say anything. She lives in Venezuela. But Tony, you have, uh, you have a child? Yeah, he's four and a half. Four and a half. Uh, all, Greg, all, all Greg, kids any? Are peers. Our, kids, huh? our kids are peers. Yeah, every single one. Definitely. All right, so... Like we have a preschool. My kid just started kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. Now, exciting. Yeah. now, Drew and, uh, and Art both conceived uh, the, the um, unconventional. No, no, no. no, no. Art, Art is going to try again the unconventional. We're, we're thinking oh, about I see. it. We're, we're trying to figure it out because... Well, figure it out. I'm not home a lot, right? Yeah. So, there you go. 
So I don't know. Oh, so your daughter was conceived uh, through biblical uh, measures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when we yeah. when we were poor, <laughs> to something. Living, when we were poor and had no money, right, and, and toothless, and, and weren't married, and then right. and then, then it was know. easy to conceive. Right. Oh, yeah, Art's uh, strung out on heroin. The band has a no, song no, record, no, 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 and no, uh, no. pow, everyone's pregnant. <laughs> I know how it goes. <laughs> no, that was the early days. Okay, so but Drew, because uh, your sperm is not as uh, ambitious as most had to go through uh, different means for contraception. Fertility right? campaign. For conception, for conception, I should say. Right. And the fertility campaign that you waged was uh, was what? Explain the procedure. <laughs> well, I mean, we did an in vitro fertilization, but, but Art and I were comparing notes on how they... Uh, how you get it in the cup. How they obtain the specimen of the, for the male. Right. And uh, in, uh, in, our, in my case, the men would line up every morning at the uh, specimen room. But they gave you videos, And man. you'd go into the they room gave and, videos and to produce watch. a specimen. And why every morning? <laughs> I took mine home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, they did the uh, implantations in the afternoon. So they needed the sperm, prepare it all during the morning. and uh, So uh, and uh, morning was sample. Uh, late morning was uh, uh, pep talk. And then <laughs> it was in for the sperm. Uh, in in the afternoon. I think they would probably mix the sperm with the eggs in the morning, okay. and, then, and then they'd to implant the fetuses. I, I, I we'll we'll get to Tony, but but here's my question: How many Tony's mornings like, did you do this? Oh, I thought you'd just do it one I morning. Think you did it. I did it once to sort of test things, to make sure everything was okay, and then you, make do, sure it's working. then you do it once for the real the real thing for the performance. Okay, and you can't be serious that there's a line of guys. A line of guys. I stood in line with four guys one morning. And uh, and and is there? How long did it take you? They didn't yeah, help it, each other or anything. It was just they're in line. They're not wa- you don't watch one another. I mean, uh, you, you go into the <laughs> right. closet. Right. There's a certain camaraderie in masturbation. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh man! Dude. All right, so it, yeah, I read about that. It, there were videotapes in the in the uh, in the whack closet that you went into, right? <laughs> Jack Shack. And uh, was there now? Did it double as uh, like a janitorial closet where a uh, elderly black gent walked in and said, "Don't mind me, I'm just going for the end dust." No, no, it was it was a, end, a dedicated uh, closet. Okay. And did end you end do it standing up or did you uh, recline on a cot? He's not done. I don't remember. I don't remember. See, I'm like a dog. I can't masturbate unless there's something around <laughs> that's familiar that I can sniff, like a gym sock. <laughs> That's how my penis works. I actually take, you know, like how bloodhounds work when a, when a convict escapes and they give him like a, you know, article of clothing. I have to let my penis sniff a gym. Okay, boy. Now get him. Get him. All right. So, uh, and, and just into a regular cup? Uh, a little like a urine specimen container. And did you snap the lid on it? or yeah. you just uh, yeah, okay. You know what's and really weird? Did, what? did, how big was yours? Because mine didn't fit very well. It was like about that big. It was like a urine cup. 